Hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter four is sum of numbers. All right, so write a program with a loop that asks the user to enter a series of positive numbers. The user should enter a negative number to signal the end of the series. After all the positive numbers have been entered, the program should display their sum. Okay, so basically this program is going to ask the user to enter a positive number. And it's going to keep asking the user to enter a positive number. Um, until the user enters a negative number. When the user enters a negative number, the program is going to stop and and add up all the positive numbers the user add, the user typed, and basically display the sum. Okay, so let's start um, over here. So we know we are going to ask the user to enter a positive number. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and start asking the user to enter. A positive number. Let's read the f this. This just um, enter, uh, allow the user to type in the first, the very first number. So I'm going to do that with the input function. Now the input function, I'm going to basically display a string and say, I'm going to ask the user to please enter the first number. Now the input function by default always returns a string. It always returns a string. So even if the user types in a positive number over here, that positive number is going to be returned as a string. So in order for us to have that, that number, which is returned as a string, as a positive number, in, 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 sorry, in, in, order, in order to have it as a number instead of a string, we need to go ahead and convert everything that a user has typed into, uh, in this case, I want it as a float. Now, although we are adding positive numbers, I, the user may end up typing, or, or, or yeah, or uh, the user may end up typing, let's say, 2.5 to add to the numbers, right? So that's why I want to go ahead and convert it to a float. So I'm going to convert everything the user has typed to a float by calling the float function and surrounding everything that the user has typed with parentheses. So I'm, I'm surrounding the input function, everything that the user has typed over here with parentheses. Um, and I'm conver converting it to a float. And once I'm done converting it to a float, I need a place to store it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable, and I'm going to call it user number. User number is basically going to store the number that the user has typed, which has been converted to a float and returned. Okay, so user number is going to have. So we have the first, the very first number. So now we can create a while loop. I'm going to go ahead and create a while loop here and say, because the program said that we should keep asking the user until the user, the user enters a, a negative number. So it says over here. The user should enter a negative number to signal the end of the series. But before that, it says write a, write a program with a loop that asks the user to enter a series of positive numbers. So we are asking the user a series of um, a series of questions to enter positive numbers, basically, and the user should type in a negative number to basically stop that loop and display the sum of all the positive numbers the user has typed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a while loop because it said we should use a loop. So I'm going to use a while loop and say while the user number is less than sorry, um, sorry while while it's greater than zero, right? Well, let's see. Yeah, well, yeah. While it's greater, than, should I say get zero? If zero is actually. Um, uh, we we can actually do it a couple of. I'm going to say while it's um I'll, I'll say w w i'll say what while it's um let's see I, I don't want to use a negation i just want to use a p the positive side so we can say while the user number is greater than negative one we can do this yeah, or yeah we can we can do this we can say while it's greater than uh, negative one meaning while it's positive or we can say while it's while user number is not um, sorry, we can put a um, an, an exclamation sign in front of it, but I don't want to do that to confuse it. Let, let's just keep it simple and just undo it and say while the user number is greater than negative one. If it's greater than negative one, then we know that the user number is either zero um, or above, okay, zero or positive. So while it's greater than negative one, we want to keep on asking. Well, first of all, we, we have the first number, so let's add that the first number to a variable a variable that's going to keep track of all the numbers that the user has typed, all the positive numbers that the user has typed. I'm going to first of all declare a variable called total. And total is basically going to keep track of all the number, all the positive numbers that the user has typed. So total is going to be equal to zero. Initially, 
we, we are we are adding all the numbers up so initially it's equal to zero and we are adding up well add, add, adding it all up so while the user number is greater than negative one meaning while it's a positive number let's add the user number to total okay total is going to be what total is going to be equal to what's already stored in total plus the user number because we are adding it all up while the number is a positive number so total is going to be equal to what's already stored in total plus user number okay so total number is going to be zero initially so if these are let's say types in 2.0 or let's say 2 it's going to be 0 plus 2 0 plus 2 the whole expression gives you 2 2 is going to be stored in total so now total is 2 these are types in another positive number and it's going to be total plus total which is 2 plus the positive number let's say these are types in let's say 3 so it's going to be 2 plus 3 and 5 is going to be stored in total so basically total is keeping track of all than all the positive numbers the user is typing. So while these while the number is positive, add up the number to total. And then while while you're done, before you go back and go back up and check to see if the user number is greater than negative one, take the next number. Okay, so I'm going to copy the same statement and display it. Take the next number and then check it. Check to see if it's greater than or equal to negative one. So take the next number. I can even ch change the statement and say, please enter the next number next number and it's going to check the next number and make sure it's also a positive number and it's going to add, and it's going to add it up to total right so well we can say just to add some more details to the, to the statement we can say please enter the first number or negative or, ne or, or negative number or negative number two to to quit to quit okay um, now this line over here is like a guideline this line over here is like a guideline to help me write 80 characters on a line I want to be able to write uh, I think it's 79 or 80 I'm not sure it's uh, 80 characters on a line let me see I haven't I haven't done done this it's 93 let's see I want to see if it's 80 characters on a line yep it's 80 characters. we can see over here down here that it's 80 characters on a line so if I move it you see it's moving 79 79 actually we can even keep it to 79 if we want but 80 is fine I want to be able to be able to keep 80 characters on a line it's, it's like a guideline from it's like a Python standard to be to do that so I'm keeping 80, 80 characters on a line so that means over here I've exceeded this 80 characters on a line I've crossed this line so I want to go ahead and break it so I'm going to break it somewhere here by closing the string concatenating it with the beginning of the string and then breaking it here but before you break any line on, in Python you have to type in a backslash and then you hit or you break it I'm going to hit uh, the enter key to break it all right so please enter the first number or a negative number to quit and it's going to yeah I'm going to do the same thing for this one please enter the next number um, or a negative number to quit And I'm going to do the same thing here because I've exceeded this line. So I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, space it here, break it somewhere here. But before I break it, I need to type in a backslash and hit enter to break it. Okay, so please enter the next number or a negative number to quit. All right, and once we are done with the loop, I'm, uh, this is outside the loop here. I'm outside the loop now. Once we're done with the loop, I want to go ahead and display the total. So I'm going to say print out a message saying that I'm passing in a couple of arguments in the print statement. I'm saying I'm going to say the sum of all the numbers you you entered is that's going to be the first argument I'm passing to the string uh, the print function. The second argument I'm passing into the string, uh, the print function is total. So by default, the arguments that, that you pass into the print function, the individual arguments are displayed with a space separate in them. So this is going to dis be displayed as the sum of all the, num the numbers you entered is space total. So by default, that's how the print function works. Okay, so now we're done. Let's, let me go ahead and save this and see 
what happens, so. I just one moment, my computer is acting a bit slow. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually uploading a video. What happened was my, the, it, it crashed, so, one second. I'm actually uploading a video here on YouTube. Okay, so what happened was sometimes my Wing ID, Wing 101 IDE crashes, but we haven't lost the program. The program is still there, so I'm just waiting, relaunching, uh, relaunching it, and it's going to tell us that it crashed and all that. Hopefully, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do that again. One normally when it crashes and you try to relaunch it again, it it, should, it doesn't do that. But it's still going to keep the program for us. It's not going to. We're not going to lose the program. So I'm just waiting for it. Sometimes it does that. I don't know. Maybe when I'm doing multiple things in the background, like uploading a video. That's what that's what happens. But um, yeah, so I'm just waiting for it. It's a bit slow. It's, it's uploading a video, doing all the stuff in the background, and that's why it probably crashed. I don't know. Maybe it's with the ID. Maybe it's with my computer. I don't know. But that's what's happening. I'm just waiting for this to launch again. <coughs> It's taking forever. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know. Okay, it's almost here, right? Let's see. Stop bouncing, so it's, it's almost here. I don't know why it crashes, but I was working on a Java program before. Let me just yeah, take a look at it. <laughs> um, see what happens. Okay, so it's 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 back. It's okay. So it said uh, it found it's, it found the file. Basically, I'm going to restore the file, and I'm going to see it's it's basically going to pop up. Okay, so now here here's the program we're, we're working on. Um, I'm going to try to save it, save it again. Mm, okay, I'm going to try to save it again in the folder where I normally save all the Python files, and this time it shouldn't crash. It shouldn't crash. Don't crash. If it crashes again and I open it again, I'll just run it as in, in interaction mode. Okay, so it didn't crash. Okay, um, it's on a desktop. Oh, did I just move away from it? Yeah. Okay, so I'll save this as sum of numbers. So I'll create a folder for that. And I'll save this as this file as sum of numbers dot pi. Okay. So now let's see if it runs nicely. All right, so please enter the first or negative number to quit. First number or negative number to quit. So let me just move it down a little bit. All right, so I'm going to enter um, negative two and hit enter. Now it says the sum of all the numbers you entered is zero, which is, which is true, I didn't enter any numbers. So run it again and I'm going to start entering some numbers. So now I'm going to enter, let's say eight, and hit okay now it says please enter the next number or negative number to quit so 8 plus 2 now we have 10 Enter the next number 4 now we have 14 Enter the next number 2 now we have 16 so now I'm going to enter a negative number I have 16 so far 8 plus 2 is 10 4 plus 10 is 14 2 plus 14 is 16 I'm going to enter a negative number over here and I'm expecting 16 and now it says the sum of all the numbers you entered is 16 so it's working the only thing I want to do is just put, you know, put uh, a line break or a space, basically a new line in between the questions. So basically, yeah, the questions that uh, that that ask for the number or the numbers and the the output. So I can do that with, in multiple ways. Before over here, I can just go ahead and and type in the new line character. In the string, I can just type in backslash n. Backslash n is a new line character. It basically starts an escape sequ an escape sequence. This backslash it starts an escape sequence. One, as soon as you type this backslash, it, it's expecting one of the ex escape characters, like n. So n creates a new line. So backslash n together 
creates a new line character. Basically, it takes the Keza from where it is now. So at this point, the Keza will be here. If you, if I, by typing the new line character, I've, I've moved the Keza to the next line like this. So anything that comes after the new line character, meaning anything that comes after the, after the new line character, the sum of all, all of that, basically that string is displayed on that next line here. So there's going to be an empty line just because I type in the new line character. When I displayed this again, and I try a couple of, let's say, numbers, and I type in a negative number, I'm expecting 9. Now it says the sum of all the numbers you enter is, is 9.0. I, I can see that the new line character is, is there, or has, has, been, has taken effect. You move the character to the next line before displaying anything that came after the new line character. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to, now when you type in the print function, when you type in the print function and type in, let's say, a string like this, and you print this, you type in, let's say, negative number here, and I print it, it's basically going to print out whatever you told it to print before printing anything that comes after it, which is the sum of all the numbers. So it printed exactly what I told it to print. And at the same time, it took the case to the next line. So anything that came after this print fun function came on the next line. Now, by default, the print function, anytime you tell it to print whatever, you, uh, anytime it prints whatever you told it to print, it's going to take the Keza to the next line. It's going to take the Keza, or basically the position, not the Keza. The, you can think of it as a Keza, but it takes the position to the next line. Okay, the print position, you can think of it like that, to the next line. So anything that comes after after whatever you've told it to print is printed on the next line. By default, that's how it works. By default, it takes the position to the next line. So it prints whatever you've told it to print and then displays anything that comes after that on the next line. Now, when you call the print function without any string in it it's still going to print in this case it's printing nothing at first you told it to print something now it's printing nothing but 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 because by default the print function always takes always ends whatever you've told it to print with a new line meaning it prints whatever you've told it to print and takes the case out of the position to the next line by default okay because it works that way although you've told it to print nothing it's going to go ahead and print nothing but because that's how it works, it's going to take the position to the next line. So it's going to, in this case, print nothing, but take the position to the next line over here. So anything that comes after printing nothing is going to display on that on that next line. So it's going to print nothing, meaning print a new empty line and take the case to the next line. So anything that comes after that print function over here, which is the sum of all the numbers, is going to display it on the next line. So I'm going to run this and try it with a couple of numbers, let's say four, and three I'm expecting them um, let's say nine I'm expecting um, 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 I'm expecting uh, so nine plus three is um, 12 and four um, 12 plus 4 is 16 so I'm expecting that all right so when I type in this a negative three to end it I'm expecting 16 okay so now we can see that the new line correct the new line has been has taken effect over here and anything that came after the new line has been displayed here. All right, so now it's working. So that's th those are the two ways, either this or the new line character. Both of them, both of them work. So, yeah. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Have a, have a nice time. Um, Thank you. Thanks again for watching, and um, I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, then. Take care. Bye-bye.